welcome back to the channel um, so today's video is all about da -da, a new family member okay so I just wanted to give you guys a little update uh, I got a second dog okay so if you don't know I own a blue Frenchie um, and this is my second dog okay baby T T for Thea um, so she's a toy poodle Okay, so she's currently about three and a half months old and this video is basically like a puppy video. I just want to show you the process of getting her, uh, some snippets of training her, some snippets of her cute moments and just answering some of the puppy questions that you guys have submitted. Um, for those of you who are wondering, especially my older followers, don't worry. Hector is all good and all fine. He's very healthy now. He's living with his dad. And I get very regular updates about him. Uh, I'm still contributing financially to um, Hector's life. Uh, we co-own Hector, so we are co-parenting very well. So thank you if you have been asking about the whereabouts of Hector. Um, yeah, thank you so much for loving Hector. I really appreciate that. Okay, so yeah, uh, getting a second puppy has always been uh, in the talks for me and my previous partner so this is actually just something that was supposed to happen anyway uh, but I've decided to kind of like raise the second dog on my own I guess so yeah this time around when I got a second dog obviously Frenchie was one of my considerations but Frenchie costs a lot in Singapore uh, about 10 to 12 grand and I'm honestly not into spending that much money uh, on a dog so we got Hector from London from UK um, he costs about six thousand sing including flight fees um the, the puppy fees and also all the paperwork and also all the vet fees as well so other than a frenchie i want to get something entirely different from um, hector's breed as well so it's either a much bigger breed or a tinier breed uh, because hector is about 15 kg so i look around I signed up for like this um, puppy mailer which is like the best I wanted to kind of like really introduce you to it it's called Puppy Singapore okay so if you google you should be able to find them so what they do is they gather all the puppies that's in the market right now okay and they just list it on their website so different puppies are to be viewed at different locations okay so I was quite picky I'm just scrolling for a long time just waiting for updates every single week new puppies whatsoever until i saw her okay her original name was rebel i have no idea why rebel because she's so timid and soft and gentle you can see okay i was really drawn to her eyes i don't know if you guys can tell but she has like the most cutest eyes ever so i was really drawn to her white chest uh, which is really rare for a fawn toy poodle so this color is fawn uh, toy poodles are also available in uh, creams whites blacks silvers which is the most expensive one okay so this is fawn i really like fawn okay i didn't want to get another boy because i've never had a female dog in my entire life my previous two dogs uh, who have already passed away uh, they are both males okay so I've only had male dogs all my life so I really wanted a different experience this time now so I got a female pup for the first time I actually like it okay, so yeah uh, sorry for the long intro but yes I just wanted to share this information with you uh, you can now enjoy a few cute clips of um, our life together for the past one month <laughs> So this was the first day I saw uh, Thea at the pet shop, Shikapaw. So I saw her on Puppy Singapore's uh, email. She's very calm as you can see. I have muted the background sound. Um, the other dogs are actually barking and just really excited to see humans. But she's just her own vibe. So today is the first day I brought Thea home. She is so tiny. I personally have a quite a tiny head and she's way tiny. <laughs> and the first thing I noticed about like having a female dog is that they are kind of like more clingy, more princessy. So I kinda of like that. <laughs> Yeah. 
just like any other puppies, the first few days are always the most stressful because they are adjusting to a new environment. So this is after she peed on the wrong area, if I'm not wrong. But not for too long because you want the pen to be a place where she sleeps, she finds comfort and she feels safe in it. She's in this tiny little tote bag. Uh, she seems pretty calm in it. So I'm very excited for her vaccination. I don't know how uh, her reactions are going to be like with needles. We'll see. Because the vet is just a road across, I'm going to cycle there <laughs> with her in my bag. <laughs> okay, so wish us luck. Okay, so today we are 13 weeks old. Um, so I was about to net with Thea and she was crying so I put her down and she went to pee on pee tree right away so I'm super super proud of her potty skills Mommy's so proud of you girl Okay, uh, obviously I'm very proud of my own skills as well Like I said, after I raised Hector, I'm super confident in raising puppies So I'm very happy that I managed to kind of like potty train her completely She's completely housebroken now, she's allowed to roam around And all these happen within like just one and a half weeks of having her back in this apartment with me She's super smart, super easy to train And yeah, I'm just so 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 proud of this little puppy here <laughs> Oh yes, update on her vaccination. So she's having dinner right now. Uh, we couldn't do the vaccination today because according to the vet, she's less than 16 weeks old, which is when um, the third puppy booster is the most effective. So it really doesn't make sense uh, for us to inject her today because she's not even 14 weeks old yet. So there was a false alarm for her, but at least, you know, she kind of like uh, get a feel of how it's like to go to the vet so I'm happy for her regarding that Alright, so some of you have been asking how I housebreak my dogs Okay, so when I first got Hector, same as when I first got Thea, this is what I set up Okay, so this is called crate training um, A lot of owners skip crate training because when they get a puppy, they just want to cradle, they want to sleep with the puppy But it's not right because you need to let the dog know where are their boundaries in the house So they need to master their own area which is that crate first then they are allowed to explore other areas of the house okay so the in their little crate itself this is their own territory that you are giving to them uh they are supposed to learn how to potty first okay on the pee tray then they are allowed to explore the other uh, areas outside of their own territory and then you know that is when you have housebreak them, of course. Okay, so let's take a look at what is needed inside a crate. Okay, so this is Thea's crate. Okay, so this is a very beautiful pen and expensive one <laughs> that I got uh, from a friend. Okay, it's actually secondhand. So I'm actually looking to sell it away. I didn't expect to sell it away this soon because um, I thought she would need it till she's six months old, but she's already completely house trained. I just want to show you, okay, a bit explicit content. It's her waist. So if you don't want to see dog waist, please uh, fast forward for a few seconds, okay? If you're ready, let's go. Okay, so Thea is a very good girl. She has successfully mastered everything from peeing on the tray to pulling on the tray as well. This is one thing that I am very proud of because for Hector, he doesn't like to pull on a tray. He likes to pull in the balcony, a specific area, but not on the tray. He doesn't like to pee and pull on, his, uh, on the tray on the same area. So, okay, that's fine with us as long as he pees on the tray. Okay, so in your crate, now this is quite a tiny area because Thea is very tiny. She's only one point something kg, okay? So obviously Hector's crate, Hector weighs 15 kg, he's a medium breed. His crate area was way bigger than this, okay? So this is a tiny bed for them to rest. Um, obviously food and water bowl, she just ate so I always clear it away. Uh, I like to clean the bowls. And a little pea tray, this is a size um, small. Very. Usually there are three sizes of pea trays for dogs. Okay, I'm sorry. 
keep looking at the waist. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, let me cut for you. So typically, yeah, this is what you want. Uh, so when Dia came home, obviously she wasn't allowed to roam around. She wasn't allowed to sleep with me unless she knows how to potty on this tray. Okay. So moving on to how to train her to keep potting on this tray. Okay, another popular question would be um, the price. Uh, I've done a lot of research, okay, before getting here. Uh, just to check out what is the market price of puppies right now during COVID times. And also, what how's the market like uh, purchasing a puppy in Singapore? Because the last time I bought a puppy was like when I was 12. That's over a decade ago. <laughs> okay, so the market is indeed very different now. Puppies do cost four times or at least uh, five times more. Uh, I don't really like the new pricing, obviously. But together with um, the paperwork, uh, the flight fees, um, the, the, the cost of the puppy, Hector also costs almost the same. Uh, in fact, the year costs a little bit lesser. Okay, so uh, I was okay to kind of like get um, the year at that price. Uh, obviously, a little bit of negotiation here and there would help you a little bit. <laughs> That's the thing about life. <laughs> okay, just to be completely honest, I did try to negotiate my way. Okay, so anyway, if you haven't done your research and you kind of like want to know what I have found, uh, nowadays, puppies cost at least 6.5 grand uh, sing dollars. Uh, and above okay and it's just ridiculous I don't really agree with the pricing like I said uh, unless you have been saving for a while like I do uh, if not try not to spend your money this way this is my advice because it's a pandemic if you can save money save money okay unless you have been saving for a long time and you're ready to go meet financially uh, then yes I would suggest this is my very honest um, advice to you okay so nowadays puppies cost at least 6.5 grand um they can range all the way to 14 grand i saw a teacup poodle selling at 14 grand that is ridiculous i have no idea why is it priced uh this way uh frenchies as usual they cost about 10 to 12 grand okay still hasn't really changed three years ago okay three years ago i tried to get a frenchie in singapore so that hasn't changed uh but for poodles toy poodles uh, usually they are around this range uh, 6 to about a high 7 grand So yeah, that's the end of the video guys Thank you so much for watching If you have any other puppy related questions You can leave a comment down below for me uh, I'll be happy to answer them As long as uh, it's something that I have you know experience with uh, Yeah, as usual there's going to be a little giveaway so As usual there's going to be a giveaway for my female viewers uh, All you have to do is to subscribe, like and also leave a comment down below for me and then i will pick three lucky winners uh, to send a beauty box to okay so yeah i really hope that you enjoyed this video i'm sorry that it's a little bit long but yay i'm so happy that the puppy is out of the bag <laughs> i've been wanting to tell you about um my second dog so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video i will see you in my next video bye